Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Russia's gold production growth to overtake China's in less than 10 years. Let's explore. Yes, this comes to us from Kitco in Golubova. This is fascinating. Russia will be ramping up its gold production as it increases its gold reserves in light of expanding U.S. sanctions, Fitch Solutions said in a report. The move will lead to Russian gold production growth overtaking that of China by 2029, the report stated. The risk the rising risk of Russian state banks being frozen out of dealing in dollar-denominated assets altogether as bilateral relations remain strained is pushing the Russian central bank to increase its holdings of gold. As long as tensions with the U.S. remain, domestic demand for gold is set to remain. And by the way, those tensions were increased. I very recently heard about, just even today, about another uh, uh, situation in near Alaska where jets, Russian jets came in within 37 miles from uh, the border there. So they had to scramble their planes coming in that close for sure. More specifically, Fitch Solutions projects uh, for Russian gold production to rise from 11.3 million ounces in 2020 to 15.5 million ounces in 2029 which would mean a rise of 3.7% an ounce on an annual basis during that period. This means that Russia would account for 11.6% of global gold output versus today's at 10.6%. Here we can see the a graph here that shows uh, that uh, difference here. Australia, China, Russia, and the United States. Look how low the United States is um, and of compared there. And you see the global... Uh, line going up here, here, but Canada is um, is you know, really, in a sense, just above the United States right now. But China is the biggest producer there. Uh, <clears throat> for China, Fitch Solutions expects gold production to stagnate between now and 2029, uh, growing 0.2 percent on average on an annual basis. The report report pointed out to dwindling reserves, production cuts, and strict environmental regulations as some of the reasons for the halt. This marks a notable slowdown compared with the average annual growth of 3.1% over the previous 10-year period, the report said. Nonetheless, the country will remain the largest global producer of gold ore by a significant margin. According to Fitch Solutions, China will be able to keep its top producer status by increasing investment in foreign gold mines. Key deals in recent years have included Chinese firm Shandong Gold's purchase of a 50% stake in the Valerdo mine in Argentina from Barrick Gold for 960 million bucks. The firms also worked together on exploration activities in the area, the report said. In 2017, Zijin Mining uh, produced 1.2 million ounces of gold, um, reportedly accounting for 10.2% of China's total output. Another Chinese top competitor moving forward will be Australia, which is estimated to see gold production rise 2.2% on an annual basis between now and 2029, which will mean an increase from the current 11.7 million ounces to 14.2 million ounces in 2029. Overall, global gold production is estimated to rise from 106 billion ounces or million ounces in 2020 to 133 million ounces by 2029. So that's interesting. So a rise in gold production, which means an average annual growth of 2.5%. That's about the target for inflation. Interesting. In comparison between 2016 and 2019, Global production rose 1.2% on an annual basis. So we're ramping up the gold production, folks. So much for peak gold out there. Yeah, this actually should be a warning to gold bugs, which may mean that gold may be overvalued. Likely not, though. Gold really has performed quite well, 
But I think what's keeping gold prices up are all these central banks accumulating it. And why? I think this is telling us something here, that this annual growth and this, uh, this, this increase in production is mainly going to some of these countries. They want to catch up to the United States. Very interesting indeed. Well, let me know what you think. Post your comments in, this, in the comment section below because there's no other place to post comments but in the comment section. And uh, I'd like to extend, greatly extend to every each and every single one of you, including your immediate family members. This does not go to extended family yet. But I want to extend a multitude of gratitude to you and your immediate family members. And I want to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.